Okay, hello and welcome everyone. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the discrete Bertrand model. So this is gonna be an identical products Bertrand where firms are choosing prices or they're choosing their strategies from this set of integers uh, or from just in general from a set of integers. And it has an interesting structure. So it has a little bit of a different solution than the standard uh, Bertrand model where they're choosing from a, a continuum. However, it has much of the same logic. So let me walk through this. So suppose we have players choosing an integer from this set, 2 up to 10. And then we'll assign payoffs as follows. You receive a payoff of 0 if you have the highest number, or if there's you know, a duopoly and you have the high number out of the pair, or if there's, you know, what I say here is if your number is higher than anybody else's. So think about a firm. If they set a price higher than anybody else's, they're going to be undercut. So we'll get a price, they'll get profits of zero. We'll say the payoff is N. They receive just their, their number as their payoff if their number is lower than everyone else's. If you're the low price firm, you capture the market. We'll just say your profits are whatever your number is. And then N divided by big N. If you tie with N minus one, big N and minus one, other people for the lowest number, right? So if you have two firms that tie at two, then the payoff would be what? One each. If you have uh, two firms tying, or if you had three firms tying at two, what would your payoff be? Well, two divided by three, so two thirds. Okay, so you wanna think of this kind of like a market. So kind of like market competition where their set firms are setting prices by choosing these numbers, right? So you think of well, ten is wonderful because that'd be that'd be the most profitable. Although you're not ever going to be able to get that, right? You can never get a payoff of ten. Why can't you get a payoff of ten? If you choose ten as your number, what's going to happen? Well, at best, your rival, your co-players, also choose ten, and then you tie and you split ten with however many other people. So if there's ten other firms. 10 over 10, you'd get a, you'd get one as your payoff. If there's one other person, then you get five as your payoff, right? So 10 divided by two people in a tie. Worst case scenario, whoever is your rival sets nine or something lower, and then they'd capture the market and then their payoff would be nine. So actually the highest payoff in this game that anybody could ever walk away with would be a payoff of nine. And that's what happens if you select nine and everybody else does 10. Okay, so, so but, even so, that's not a Nash equilibrium. So that would be the best outcome. The best outcome in a game from the standpoint of highest payoffs has no bearing on Nash equilibrium. And so we want to find Nash equilibrium in this game. To do this, we want to think about uh, we want to think about first defining a strategy profile and then thinking about what the Nash equilibria are. Okay, so a strategy profile is an n tuple of selections, one from each player. So if we have a duopoly, the strategy profile would be a uh, would be a pair. Right? If you have three players, the strategy, a strategy profile would be a triple. Let's just say we have a duopoly. So then a, one strategy or a general form of a strategy profile in this game for a duopoly would be N1, N2, right? Where N1 is the, is the number selected by person one, N2 is the number selected by person two. So these are the numbers from player one and player two respectively. And one such strategy profile would be two, two. Right? Another one would be 2 3 or 2 4 or 4 4 or 5 5. Right? There's a lot of them. Then we'd say a strategy profile is a Nash equilibrium if no player has a profitable unilateral deviation. Strategy profile is a Nash equilibrium if no player has a profitable unilateral deviation. What that means is we have a Nash equilibrium if you give me a pair of numbers such that nobody individually wants to switch. Right? And so suppose we suppose that pair of numbers is 10, 10. Does somebody want to switch? Yes, they both want to switch conditional on the rival not switching, right? So if you're at 10, 10, you're, you'd be tying, your payoffs would be five. Can you do better than five? Yeah, if the, if the other person continues to do 10, and that's what we mean by unilateral deviation, and you switch to nine, now your payoff is nine and their payoff is zero. Right, so 1010 is not a Nash equilibrium. Neither is 910, because as you're at, if you're at 910, is that's our strategy profile. You selected nine as your strategy. They selected 10 as their strategy. Does anybody want to change their strategy? Well, not you, because you're getting nine, and and uh, and that's the highest payoff in the game. But your rival does. They don't want to keep saying 10, because if they do that, their payoffs are zero. But if they select eight while you continue to select nine, that's what we mean by a unilateral deviation, they would get a payoff of the strategy profile would be eight, nine, or nine, eight. Your number would be nine. Their number would be eight. 
they'd capture the market, they'd have payoffs of nine or of eight, you'd have payoffs of zero, right? Would that be a Nash equilibrium? No, because you don't want that. You don't want it the zero that's associated with nine or 10, anything higher than eight. You'd want to undercut that person by while they continue to say eight, you'd say seven. And this process would unravel just like the, just like the Bertrand undercutting in a standard Bertrand analysis. Ultimately, we find this game has a, has a unique Nash equilibrium where both players select two, right? The payoff would be one each because you've tied, right? So your payoff is your number divided by the number of people you've tied with in the case of ties. So this would be two divided by two or one. And no one can go lower because we're not allowing any lower numbers. Uh, going higher, you can do that. You don't want to because the payoff would go to zero for anything higher than two, right? And so, and, and, and then what if you do that? Uh, it's it's a profit it's profitable for the other person but it's not a profitable unilateral deviation from your standpoint right so you would never do that we're at 2 2 your rival would really like it if you choose a higher number because then they walk away with 2 as their payoff but you're not going to do that because that would make your payoff zero right so there's a unique nash equilibria here in this particular game 2 2 this is the game where we're selecting numbers from the from the set 2 up through 10 right? Integers two up through 10. Now, suppose I widen the set to allow zero and one. In doing so, I would add two Nash equilibria, right? If we widen the set to allow you to select zero and to select one, those would also be Nash equilibria. Why would one one be a Nash equilibria? Can you deviate by, by, by doing anything else? Well, at one one, you'd, uh, you'd tie and you'd each get payoffs of a half if you went lower, if you went to zero, you'd capture the market, but you'd have zero. If you went higher, you'd get zero. So one, one would be a Nash equilibrium uh, in this set if we allowed the set zero, one. And actually zero, zero would, have, would as well for the same reason as uh, two is a Nash equilibrium here. Uh, would two, two persist as a Nash equilibrium in the game where players are allowed to select one or zero? Yes, because at if I select two and you select two, we tie, our payoffs are each one. What can I get by deviating? If I switch to one, I can get a payoff of one, which is not a profitable unilateral deviation because I'm going to get one whether I select uh, two while you select two or if I deviate to select one while you select two, right? And then I would never select zero because I'm going to get a payoff of zero if I do that while well, either, either way. Uh, there's an interesting paper. This is called Blowing the Whistle. And it is an experimental paper that uses the discrete Bertrand. Uh, a ver uh, this is a variant of that. And they are interested in exploring the effects on cartel behavior when, when cartels are able to rat each other out, essentially. It's a really interesting paper, an interesting experimental paper, uh, and, uh, and relatively, rel pretty, relatively accessible at, uh, at undergraduate level economics. There's some gain to to reading through it. It's actually kind of a cool paper. And so I recommend it if you have an interest. So, okay, very good.